The charity Food Bank has released its annual snapshot of Australia's growing food insecurity problem. And it's found that 15% of Australians have experienced food insecurity at least once in the past 12 months. And that almost half of those are employed. Here's Brianna Casey, who's CEO of Food Bank Australia. Brianna, thanks for coming in. So how does that 15% then compare to previous years? Has it gone up? We are seeing a massive increase in how regularly people are reporting to be food insecure in Australia. In fact, we've seen a doubling in the number of uh, vulnerable Australians who are experiencing food insecurity once a month or more. So it's not just that there's more Australians who are food insecure, it's how routinely and how mm. regularly they're now food insecure as well. It's very, very concerning. And when we say food insecure, what does that mean? Well, it's different to hunger. I've got two boys. They tell me they're hungry all the time. They're not food insecure. We're talking about Australians who, for one reason or another, don't have the means by which to put a meal on the table. They don't have secure access to nutritious food and enough of it. So these are people who are everyday Australians, just like you and I, who are going through a crisis in their life. It's generally a temporary crisis. It might be as simple as someone in their family having an unexpected medical incident that, that takes them out of the workforce. It might be the car breaking down on the way to work. It is everyday things that are happening when we're living mortgage payment to mortgage payment, rental payment to rental payment. It doesn't take much to tip someone into food insecurity. And all of a sudden, food becomes a discretionary item. And 48% uh, of those facing food insecurity have a job. Is that a change? It is. I think when we think about food insecurity, we often think about countries overseas, away from Australia as the lucky country. We also think about homeless people living on the streets. They are indeed food insecure, but so too are people living on your street. They're mums and dads, they're the elderly, retirees, they're rural and regional Australians. So they're everyday people who have employment, but it might be that they're underemployed or they don't have enough employment. And I think what we've seen increasingly, and it's all over the news today as well, the impact of building shock and skyrocketing energy prices is absolutely crippling Australians right now. Household budgets are stretched beyond belief and we're seeing people make conscious decisions between heating or eating. They are making decisions at the family dinner table about whether they pay the bill or whether they put a meal on the table. Well how did you find that, that people and families typically cope when there isn't enough money for food? We're really sorry and, and sad to see how frequently people are meal skipping. We're seeing a lot of mums and dads sitting down at the dinner table telling their children I'm, I'm not hungry, I had a big lunch, when they simply don't have enough food to put on the table. So we're actually seeing about half of the food insecure Australians in this, uh, across our country who are routinely meal skipping. And some of them, in fact, about 28% of those 6.3 million are going an entire day without eating. And when we think about the fact that more than a quarter of the people that we assist through food bank charities with food relief are children, mm -hmm. and we think about the long-term impacts for those kids going to school with empty tummies, not fueling their bodies to allow them to learn and play and laugh and, and socialise with their friends, we're talking about a very significant problem. So when a family or an individual comes to you, Food Bank Australia, for help, what can you do for them? We are responsible for assisting about 652,000 people every month. And just last year alone, we distributed 63 million meals. So we essentially act as a giant kitchen pantry to the welfare sector. So there's about 2,500 charities, and they're big name charities like Salvo's, Vinnie's, Anglicare, St Vincent de Paul, right down to local soup vans. We act as the kitchen pantry for them. So if someone's in crisis, it might be a woman escaping domestic violence, it might be someone who has fallen on um, some tough times. They go to that charity, they secure food through Food Bank and we're able to assist them. The challenge we have right now is because there are so many challenges facing Australians from those skyrocketing energy prices, costs of living, housing affordability, demand is actually outstripping supply. Mm. So we've got about 65,000 people a month who are being turned away by our charities because we can't give them enough food and that's a huge problem for us. Do you find that most people do ask for help when they need it? No, no unfortunately not. We know that about 15% of Australians are actually food insecure but only about 2 million of them are seeking food relief. So there's about 2 million Australians out there who are just scraping by and doing what they can without asking for help and the challenge for us is finding those people and letting them know that there shouldn't be a stigma attached to being food insecure. This is happening to everyday Australians just like you. It is not shameful, it is not bad, it is not wrong to ask for assistance. So we want to make sure we've got enough food to provide to these people. And it's one of the reasons that we are asking government to invest more heavily in support services and, and really essential programs like school breakfast programs mm. so that these kids can go off to school with full tummies and look at the benefits that that's going to deliver them. Well, finally, what age group then does food insecurity most affect? Uh, 
everyone at the moment, but we're certainly seeing young Australians and millennials in particular overrepresented, but we're also seeing rural and regional Australians overrepresented. So those in farming country and, and country areas are really struggling right now as well. But it, it's kids, it's the elderly, it's a bit of everyone. Brenda Casey, thank you. Thank you.